Okay, I would like to get uh, Zarab sir's views on the same, please. Yeah, good evening, everyone. Thank you. So, first of all, I would like to say on the issue, we need discussion. We need to deliberate and deliberate a lot. You uh, referred about internet. It is important. We, we should discuss such things because uh, uh, even discussion on anything which is for which we are uncomfortable, that is, uh, we avoid it and we lead to a point at which we are. This discussion should, uh, I mean, commence uh, in the society and then in the right fora, which is the legislature. Before the legislature, it is an immaterial issue at the moment. Uh, and uh, that is the reason this difficult task is before the courts. The courts have to decide on the exception, whether uh, this exception is right or wrong. Let's say they decide on the constitutionality of it and they, I mean, at the moment, there are two different views, one of Justice Shagdhar and one of Justice Shankar. But let's say they decide unanimously in the Supreme Court that it is uh, not the right thing. Then what is the way forward? The way forward has to come from the legislature. The judiciary should not be burdened. So that was just uh, something which I wanted to add. Now coming back to the uh, aspect of consent, look, uh, the offense as such, uh, uh, in general, at the moment, if we talk of the offense, the offense uh, is uh, what you have to prove before the court. Before the court, you have to stand and you have to, the, uh, the it has to be proved that there was an act, actus reus was there and mensria, which, uh, I mean, uh, in the, uh, by means of the exception, uh, it has been uh, done away with in case of the husband. Now, the question of consent would be, uh, uh, is important in both the instances where a third party, a person who is not related uh, is uh, involved and in the issue which is uh, in which a matrimonial relationship is there uh, between husband and wife. Now the consent aspect is the only thing which remains. Now the in, in the, uh, between husband and wife to prove sexual relationship whether it was existing it is, uh, I mean, uh, we take it for granted that yes, in a normal relationship, that's there. The question is only about, cons uh, about uh, consent. So now consent, uh, uh, the issue says it is underrated. Yes, I also uh, say that it is underrated because uh, we have to look at from both perspectives, the uh, whether consent was there or whether consent wasn't there. So if we examine it from both the aspects, how do you prove? That's uh, one aspect of it. The consent uh, uh, in a matrimonial relationship, it is very difficult, even in a third party where multiple allegations on character and other things are there. Courts have repeatedly said the lady is of uh, easy virtue of by what people say. Uh, it is immaterial, but the consent of that on, of, on that particular instance, whether the consent was there or not, that is what has to be seen. Now here in a closed room, how do you go ahead? Some people say that, look, polygraphic test uh, should be there. How do you subject someone to a polygraphic test without his consent? Again, the question of consent, even for a polygraphic test would be there. The burden of, of proof uh, as per Evidence Act 114A, uh, under normal rape, it moves uh, to the uh, uh, and presumption is uh, with the victim. So now here, if you move the presumption on the victim, how would uh, the husband prove a negative? So there are many things, detailed uh, discussion, a dialogue between in the legislature. By saying all that, I never say that this is not existent. It is. It is a malice which is there, which is prevalent. Uh, many people, many males uh, uh, abuse their right, these exceptions, but that does not mean that we take a knee-jerk reaction to it and create an, another uh, uh, 
uh, another Frankenstein mon monster uh, by doing away with the exception. We have to deliberate. That's what uh, I'd say and find out ways to uh, to decipher whether consent was there or not. Because unless we do that, all the exercise is, uh, I mean, uh, it's my word against yours. And uh, what we have seen in 498A, it was abused left, right and center. That is the reason the Honorable Supreme Court repeatedly uh, passed multiple directions that uh, what uh, precautions has to be there. And they have... Uh, uh, automatic arrest was done away with compared to 98 rape is a much heinous crime the version is the police they add on things they add on things now what's happening i don't generalize things but yes what we face in courts uh, at the moment, 377 is added in almost uh, most of the FIRs, which just to give it a color uh, uh, that uh, the arrest uh, can be ensured for a better bargain. Uh, courts are addressing that. Now, 376, you're, uh, to address an issue, we are giving something without going into the detail that how it would be adjudicated, what would be the precautions, uh, because uh, to be very honest and fair, we also share uh, part of the blame with lawyers. We add on a lot of things to get the desired result for people. So that's what my initial submission. I hope I've not digressed a lot from uh, what the initial question was.